Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Brad Whitman, who is the co-owner of LBR Homes. So excited to be jumping in, having some conversation today about business, about this know, crazy journey that we call entrepreneurship and the ups and the downs and everything that can kind of come along with that. Um, so Brad, first and foremost, thank you for taking some time. Excited to be sitting down today. Uh, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? If you could kind of give us the 10,000 foot view. Who is Brad and tell us a little bit about the business. Yeah, Tanner, thanks for having me on, man. Um, I and my wife own this company. It's uh, LBR Homes. We are a custom home builder. Um, we primarily focus on performance driven custom homes, large scale renovations, uh, where we have the opportunity to really take control of the envelope of an existing home, make it something better, make it, make it last a lot longer. Um, we've been in business since, uh, December of 2017. We're still a fairly new firm in Austin and, uh, you know, we've grown a lot over the past few years. Our portfolio has turned into something pretty incredible. We do a lot of really cool projects and have some pretty amazing clients and so it's been uh it's been a lot of fun so far and have a good path forward that's fantastic uh what'd you do before so before 2017 getting this business up and running um kind of what's what's your background how'd you get into this this path i was always a part of construction in construction growing up um i want to say fourth or fifth grade we moved in with my grandmother when i was a kid and and she was renovating a house out in the country um and i got real interested in it my dad was always doing renovation work for other people and uh it, so it always had a spark for me uh right out of college i went into industrial manufacturing and ran a cement plant for a couple of years in Gromfels. and then when i met my wife um we decided to team up together she had a, a great corporate background uh running large accounts with dell and uh you know, just wanted to, wanted to get into construction is always a passion for me. And so left, uh, left the, the large manufacturing aspect of work and, and just jumped into it. Tell me about that transition. Um, so making that, that jump and going out on your own, starting something new, mm -hmm. uh, was yeah, there, is there a bit of fear, excitement, a little bit of kind of everything at once you mentioned jumping in kind yeah. of all at once. So tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Uh, there's no sense of security whatsoever. Um, it was, it was terrifying. My first job was on thumbtack, uh, and I went and changed a window pane for a guy down in Buda and I was living in round rock. It was like $70, a $70 job. Uh, I, I think I ended up losing like $18 or something on it after fuel and time and all that. Um, but I did a good job. He called me back to do a whole lot of extra work in the house that ended up being close to ten, twelve thousand dollars worth of work for me over over a uh, over a three, four day period. Um, hired a couple guys to come in and help and and it, it just worked out and kind of ran it from there. Um, it was it was a good couple of years um, of of really doing hands-on work, um, being the traits and and running things wearing too many hats, you know, uh, before realizing that general contracting and finding good trades that are professionals that specialize in their certain aspects of the projects uh, was a lot more beneficial and gave us the freedom to be able to take on better projects and give me the time to learn more of what I wanted to learn about these types of performance driven homes and, and whatnot get really entrenched in the building science. And, and so it, it took a, it took a while, definitely took a while. Um, Luckily, Joy had a good job when when I I left a very good job to move up here and and start this journey. Um, but it's 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 turned out to be pretty successful, and so it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, you mentioned you know uh, a couple of different roles or different hats within the business. I'm curious for you today, um, now being in business, uh, you know, a handful of years here. Uh, what role do you play in the business today and how has that changed over the last couple of years? So I still manage hundred percent of the pre-construction, the, the estimating the client and architectural relationships. Um, and then I am the field operations director. So everybody in the field is under me uh, in a sense of a reporting standpoint to, um, to make sure that I've still got my hands on every aspect of every job and have the ability to retain the information that I need 
uh, to be able to come in and see something and know if it's right or wrong um, without having to actually manage the project anymore. So I still manage a couple of projects on my own, depending on the scale of the project. Uh, I don't think I'll ever get away from from being a project manager. That's that's what I love. Um, so there, regardless of how our company grows, I will still have one or two projects of my own going on. Um, but those are those are my primary roles. I love it. So if project management is one of the ones that you enjoy and may keep at least a portion of for, for a while, Absolutely. how about the other end of the spectrum? What's, what's like some of the roles or the hats that you have to wear today that as soon as you can hand it off to somebody else, like that's going to be the first one to go. Um, we are actively looking for a pre-construction manager, somebody, somebody that can do the, um, the estimating for the project and, get me out of that aspect of the chair. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a big deal and a big time suck for us. Um, we're, we're pushing seven to $10 million a year and, and, uh, gross revenue on projects. And with that, and the, the size of our team, uh, I put a lot of hours in to be able to keep up with a lot of the pre-construction work and field management still. So that'd be a good one to, to get off the chest. I love it. I love that you you had a like simple answer for it and are already in the process of of looking for someone. Um, that is that's amazing. So let, let's talk a little bit about the business itself. I always like to ask the general question of like, who does your business serve? Now, the way I like to frame this is if I'm in the audience and I'm watching this later on, how do I know that I might be a really good fit for y'all services or I might know somebody that I can refer over to you? Um, a couple of questions there. So if you're watching this and you want to know if you're a fit for us, the things that I say, they have to resonate with you. Um, as far as a client that's looking for a builder, that's looking for somebody like us um, and, and what we're looking for in a relationship with the client is first and foremost, it needs to be somebody that's got the understanding of what it takes to build a fine home. The, and, and that's, that's time, that's trust, that's transparency, that's money. Um, it's, it's, a it's a whole different ball game than going and buying a production built home on a master plan community and stuff like that. Um, so it, it really, it, it takes a lot of cultivating a relationship between us, you know, uh, clients come to us as a, as a professional, not just a service provider for them as you normally would with some sort of a handyman company or something like that. And so, um, and we spend a lot of time up front with, with clients, um, in our, in our initial meetings, making sure that it's going to be the right relationship. Cause we're a, we're a family owned company. My wife and I own this, this company, we run everything. Um, and it's not worth the stress for having, you know, crappy clients. And it's also not worth the stress for a client to, to work with a builder, regardless of how good their work is to work with somebody that they don't get along with. And that, you know, that that's not a, that's not a good mix. So how do, how do y'all like stand out or uh, differentiate from some of the competitors in the marketplace? I, I know that Austin in particular has uh, grown a bit in the number of kind of custom home builders and things like that, that are out mm -hmm. there. Um, how do y'all differentiate or why uh, maybe a, a different type of question would be, why do your clients choose you over some of the competitors that are out there? It's us. It, it is, it is joy and I, it is our, our senior project manager. It's the, it's the personal aspect of the job. Um, Austin's a fantastic architecturally driven custom market. And there's a lot of builders that come along with that. Um, a lot of fantastic builders that I would say build just as good, if not better of a home than we do. Uh, they've been around longer. They've got access to trades that have been with them a lot longer that aren't deviating from those relationships, you know, and we're still, we're still building our trade list. We're, we're refining that, you know, yearly. And uh, so I, I think for us, it is, it's going to be, it's going to be me in the field. It's going to be the conversations with joy. It's going to be the conversations with our project management teams um, and the way that we run things and our transparency and, and so on and so forth. Um, we don't see, a lot of the guys that are in our peer group in this in this caliber of custom homes and construction as competition 
uh, to be honest with you, we bounce a lot of stuff off each other. We, we have a lot of, a lot of other builder buddies as we call them that we'll refer each other to and, and back and forth and call each other for advice. And Hey, what'd you, what'd you do when you had this situation with a client or this situation with a trade or, or the city changed the code last year. And, you know, this is the first one to fall into those codes under that permit requirement. Um, it's a lot of really, really good camaraderie. So, and I, and I refer, you know, clients that I think will work better with other builders that may have a previous relationship for whatever reason. Um, so there, there's not really any competition for us, but for us to get picked over somebody else, it's really going to be a, a relationship meshing properly with that client. And I love that so much. Uh, it's definitely an abundance mindset. Uh, I think we, what do we, what word do we use? Co-opetition. Uh, it's like cooperative, but yet it's still kind of like competition out there. But, um, I love that. Yeah. There's, there's so much value in everyone kind of growing together and, and being right. able to, to lift well, up one another. And that's, and that's the goal, right? You know, in, in, in these types of homes, we build them for a reason. It's not just to make money. It's to build something that we can be proud of, but that our homeowners can be proud of and that they're generational homes. They're not something that you have to move into and have a certain level of, ridiculous maintenance after a year or two and our goal one of our main goals uh, as far as my peers is to educate our clients on the importance of building this way and you spend a little bit more now to save a lot more money later and you know not not falling into the the paradigm that just because it meets code requirements and it passes inspections that it's a good home right and so it's, it's, we're constantly striving to educate clients and potential clients on why we want to build better and why that's worth it for them. Oh, that's so cool. I love the education process on that. Um, which kind of leads me to a topic. I love asking questions on that's a big topic marketing. Um, I love asking questions around it simply because it's one of those areas that, you know, it's vital to every business to have some marketing, get lead flow and all of that, but it's yeah. not always the easiest one to kind of really parse through, especially if you don't have a ma you know major background in, in marketing and things like that. So I'd like to just ask a few questions, kind of find out what, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's been your philosophy, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, since 2017, kicking this thing off and now kind of growing into the business that you are today. Um, what has been your philosophy to marketing? How do you get the word out there to the types of clients that you want to do business with? Yeah, we, we don't spend very much money on marketing. I have an Instagram that I do personally. Uh, we have a website that is not kept up with very well. Uh, but it, but it's, it's decent. Um, otherwise we'll probably spend two to $3,000 a year on job site signs. Um, our marketing is our work and our, our client relationships and then them talking to each other. You know, mm -hmm. if, if we, if we tried to market and push ourselves, we'd go crazy. We, we don't have the, the bandwidth to take on 15 projects at a time, nor do we want to, uh, cause then I lose my hand in that project. And then we just, we just turn into, you know, a, a big beast of a company. That's, it's just a cash flow cow you know and that's that's not what we want um yeah i mean our, our marketing has been good work and client relationships i like that um especially the the word of mouth the referral side of things i uh, said so i would imagine then most of the most of your new business is likely coming from from referrals at this point is that correct yeah uh, over the past six years almost every one of my clients knows each other that's fantastic. What is there anything that you're doing kind of internally to either systemize that process or uh, just, I don't know, remind folks that, you know, if, if y'all did a good job, make sure that they let somebody else know that that may also be interested. Um, do you kind of have any process or anything that you no. no, notice that you do consistently to remind them? Not at all, man. Um, we, we let, we let it be organic. We really do. I don't, um, I ask people every now and then, to leave a review and uh when i tell them that i want a review or a google review or whatever i tell them i want stories of the hardships and stories of the goods i want it to be an honest review um and that's very seldom that i even bring that up sometimes i'll think about it but everything's pretty organic that's awesome congratulations yeah. on that that's 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 fantastic to hear um so let's talk a little bit about kind of this this journey 
started the business in 2017. You know, there's been a number of years, a number of different things that have happened in the marketplace since then, as you've grown a business. Um, what are, and I'm sure there may be many, but I always like to ask kind of about the roadblocks or hurdles or like challenges or lessons learned. Maybe that's the easiest way to say it. Um, lessons learned that kind of stand out in your mind. You know, is there one or two that stand out above the rest that you could share with us on on some lessons learned in building your business? In, in construction or in business in general? Either one. Um, business in general, you know, can apply to to everyone, but I, I'm, I'm yeah. guessing there, there's some things, even if you were to answer it from a construction perspective, that still would resonate. Yeah, there's definitely some more niche answers that can fall in line with that from a, from a construction standpoint. Um, business in general, slow down and, you know, don't be afraid to take the leap, but slow down and be methodical about it. Um, you rush into it, you grow too fast, you get too big you lose sight of why you're doing it and, and you're done. Right. Um, as far as construction in general, my number one thing in our business is transparency. It's honesty. It's having vulnerability. It's understanding that we're all people. We've got the same two hands and 10 fingers and being able to have that resonate between clients and us. Um, it, I think it gives you a, gives you a different perspective on the, on the personal aspect of why we do what we do for your home. Um, and so being, being transparent, not trying to be shady businessman and pull all the dollars that you can. Uh, I think that'll go a lot further in our industry, at least. Hmm. So when you look to the future, when you look at like the next three to five years, um, continue to grow, continue to kind of build out the vision that you have, what does that look like? Where, where does the business go? And then, um, kind of as a secondary question to that, how does your role change, uh, over the next three to five years? There will be a point in time where I'm not managing any more projects. Um, that's, that's a given. Um, and you know, that day is is dreaded so i'm i'm definitely hyper focused and enjoying the time that i have in the field on these projects um but i, I would say in the next three to five um I, I i probably won't have my hands particularly on any project that's directly under me um we have a good field management team right now we expect that to to double um within probably the next two years and then that will be a sustainable point for us as a business as we sit right now the business can operate without me um mm -hmm. it's 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 done so we had a pretty crazy end of last year and beginning of this year through the year where my wife and i both had to step back for about three months and the business continued to run phenomenally um our team has been fantastic and so uh that that gives us a certain level of comfort with where we are right now we would like to see that kind of double in size in a sense of if something else happens to anybody else or whatever the case is, you know, that, that there's sustainability there and it's, and it's legitimized fully business operated. So. I love that. Um, before I start to kind of shift us into a wrap up, uh, since you mentioned, it, I want to you know ask at least one or two questions around team building. Yeah. Um, you've clearly built a, a solid team. The fact that the business can run without you, even for you know periods of time, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, what is how how do you cultivate that, especially in a in a time when I'm hearing some businesses say, oh, "God, I, I can't keep my team members, or it's hard to find and recruit them." Um, and then on the other side, I'm hearing you know amazing stories where they've got amazing team members and things like that. What is how have you cultivated the team that you've developed so far, and and how do you continue to to leverage that into growing the team over the next few years? Yeah, uh, well, primarily we don't just sit down and interview somebody. We're gonna we're going to want to bring somebody on that we've known for a while and we've built a relationship with already. Um, but we hire from the top. There's, there's, there's always a, there's always a added value to bringing in somebody fresh and kind of starting from the bottom and training them up the way that you want to. And we've gotten there where we're, we're starting to do that with, uh, with the, the lower tiered assistants and stuff like that. But as far as our team management, our CFO, our senior project manager, 
uh, you, you hire from the top and you can't be afraid to spend the money on them because if you're really hiring from the top, they will make you that money. They will, they will earn, they will earn their keep, so to speak. Um, and they have a vested interest in the company because of what you're providing for them financially, um, from a security standpoint, but also where we are from a relationship standpoint, it's the same with our team. You know, our, our relationship with our team lasts much longer than our relationship with our clients do. And, and we, we want to make sure that they feel as if they're part of the family and that they have the ability to, to, to have that be reciprocated. Mm. Did you have to, was that an easy thing kind of from the beginning for you being able to hire, um, really solid talent from the top and, and, and being able to kind of go that direction, um, knowing that yes, that traditionally costs a little bit more. And was that an easy transition for you or did you have kind of some, uh, transition to go through in order to, to get to that point of saying, Nope, we're going to hire really good people and they're going to be smart and it's, they will earn their, you know, earn their way back, uh, as, as we make that investment. Yeah, no, we had a couple of years of grinding for sure, just to, to make sure that we were doing things the right way. So it, it kind of goes back to wearing multiple hats. Um, I was putting 80, 90 hours a week in to keep up with everything and deal with, you know, every aspect of business management with joy with, and, and, and not just building homes. Um, over a certain period of time, putting that work in, you you can you can maintain a general level of, of business operation profitability um and then know that all right I, I can let go of this we're sustaining with this method and this will be able to to keep up with itself if somebody knows what they're doing um so after a couple of years of of putting in that work um we felt confident in being able to bring somebody in yeah that's fantastic. Well, I know we've covered a lot of different topics so far in the conversation, and I'm quite certain that we could probably sit here for like another hour and just dive into all the lessons you've learned. However, I do want to be respectful of time. Um, I'm going to shift this over to a couple of rapid fire questions. And these are really to just kind of pull out some additional, uh, call them wisdom nuggets for the audience, just little t t uh, top takeaways, that sort of thing. Um, so for these in total, the first one is you look at, at your journey so far, both you know from starting this business and kind of your career beforehand. Um, what would you say for you has been your kind of key to success? The transparency. I always, I always talk about it, but that transparency, I think molds the, the strongest relationship, whether it's with employees or clients or trades, um, being willing to learn and, and willing to teach and, and transparent with that. Amazing. How about advice? If you could give just one piece of advice to other business owners and entrepreneurs out there, um, what piece of advice would you want to leave them with? love what you're doing um if it's if, if you love what you're doing it's not a job it's if you don't love it it's just a business and in the long term it's not going to be worth it find something else to do i like it how about book recommendations um, I usually kind of frame this up with unless you've got a book that just like stands out in your head you know what's one that you've either currently are currently reading or maybe have read most recently or listened to um, or if books aren't kind of your thing uh, podcast or kind of anywhere else that that you might be continuously learning that you would recommend for the audience yeah I I'll be a bummer on the book thing I haven't read an entire book since I was in high school um, the, the I, I do a lot of uh, a lot of podcast listening a lot of research uh, I read a lot of tech data sheets on materials. I nerd out on on things that most people probably don't care to look into. Um, JLC Live is, you know, really good. Um, and then Build Show Network has some pretty cool stuff so every so often on it. Um, and then, you know, Fine Home Building Magazine, stuff like that. that a lot of that's real enjoyable to me. Uh, but Primarily, it's 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 tech data sheets on new materials and things that are coming out, and trying to figure out, you know, how to how to incorporate new technology into the projects and and sustainability and you know all of that. That's cool. I I think that's a it's a fun like non recommendation, I guess, from a book standpoint. Like it's right. you know if, whatever your industry is, if you're watching this later, being able to find kind of those um, those research data sheets that you can like review on, on your thing and be able yeah, to get you know, that, deep into it, really understand. That's the big thing for me is we've got, 
such a massive access to information now that there's no excuse to not educate yourself. Um, if you're willing to look for it and you're willing to dig, you can find it and, you know, learn how to research the research, obviously figure out how it's funded and where it comes from and so on and so forth. But, um, you can, you can give yourself from a knowledge standpoint, damn near a degree, if you're willing to put in the effort to look into everything that you want to know about. Um, and then it comes to hands-on field training, working with the guys, figuring it out from there. So I love it. Uh, one more of these rapid fire questions. This one's just kind of fun. Uh, if you could choose just one area in your business, you only get to choose one where you get to take a little bit of magic dust and just sprinkle it all over that one little spot. Um, and you wake up tomorrow, it's like 10 times better than it is today. Where would you choose to put that magic dust? Um, the distance between our projects. Ooh. I like that. <laughs> We've got, um, we've got jobs from from north austin to south austin to oak hill to marble falls and yeah i think uh i think that would be a big one save me two or three hours a day on the road <laughs> yeah that, that getting some time back on that front would be probably pretty amazing um, so before we get into the final question i always like to wrap these these conversations up on for those that are in the audience they're watching they want to learn more about what y'all are doing they want to connect with you personally they yeah. uh want to you know potentially do some business with you down the road or refer some business over where can they go to to find more information uh our website lbrhomes.com very simple pops right up on google uh there is a there's an info tab on there you can reach out it goes directly to joy uh, goes to our info at LBR homes, uh, email, um, Instagram.com slash LBR homes. I manage that personally, the DMS, uh, the photos, the feed, um, or just Google, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to find us. Excellent. Well, I will make sure to put all of that in the video description below. So if you are watching this later on, once we wrap up here, make sure you go click the links, check out the Instagram page, check out the website, check out everything there. Um, maybe send them a, a quick DM on Instagram to say, Hey, saw you on the business spotlight, phenomenal conversation, uh, make some connections. Cause that's one of these, you know, my favorite things about the business spotlight is actually connecting some other business owners in the, the local market here. Um, so with that, Brad, I want to you know, finish up with, with one final question, which is simply what is most inspiring to you today? Um, I think where we're heading in the industry, um, I, I, I see our, our pipeline is two years out right now. Um, and there's not a lot of folks that, that have that, um, what that means for me from a business standpoint and in our niche of construction is that more and more folks are becoming to the education aspect of why we build the way that we build. And there are, there, there are more people that are, that are leaning towards that. And, and that's, and there's not enough of us to keep up with the clientele. You know, there's, there's 35, 38 fantastic builders in the city of Austin and the surrounding areas. And, um, and we're all busy. We're all busy. And so that, that's exciting that the, um, the, the shift in understanding performance driven, comfort driven homes, well-built homes is it's happening. It's heavy here. That is inspiring. That's exciting. Um, Excited to watch just everything continue to grow, especially for you and your business. And and the, just based on the conversation, there's amazing things that you've accomplished so far. So watching that continue to go and grow, I'm I'm excited for personally. Uh, but Brad, I want to say thank you again for taking the time, sharing a little bit of your your story, a little bit of your journey, a little bit about your business. Um, I quite certain we could sit here for much longer than we have for today uh, and, and keep chatting, but uh, appreciate the time that you've invested with me today. Absolutely, Tanner. Thanks for having me, man.